All right, spiral review number three for seventh grade. So let's get going here. The first thing on our spiral review for today is that we are doing fractions and decimals. So as we work with fractions and decimals, uh, it's important to look, look at the directions first of all. It says find the difference, write the fractions in simplest form. So that's always a good reminder just to do a double check on those directions. And uh, we need to find the difference, which is the answer to a subtraction problem. And then we are going to um, simplify if we can. So this first one is negative one fifth minus negative five elevenths. Now, if you're ever confused about what to do, think about taking a simple version of that problem and, and just writing it out and think, okay, that's what I'm supposed to do with those numbers. And that will help you remember what to do with the fractions. Cause I think a lot of us freeze up when we have fractions. So if I have negative one fifth and I'm subtracting a negative, what I'm doing there is I can do keep, change, change. Remember I've told you always make it an addition problem. So keep, change, change. So now it's negative one fifths plus a positive five elevenths. So what we're doing there is we have a, we have a, a tug of war, right? Whenever we're adding, we have a positive and a negative. They're fighting it out. Think of that as a tug of war where negative one fifth is pulling um, negative and positive five elevenths is pulling positive. So we need to find out the winner by subtracting the bigger minus the smaller. What, the, what we're doing there is find the difference in their absolute values. And we'll take the sign of that stronger number, the number with the greater absolute value. So five elevenths is more than one fifth because five elevenths is about a half and one fifth is, well, it's one fifth, not even close to a half. So five elevenths minus one fifth. And I like to write my, um, oops, didn't mean to have that negative sign there. Five elevenths minus one fifth. I like to write my fraction problems for addition, subtraction, one on top of the other, so that I have space to create a, a denominator that they both go into. Five and 11 both go into 55. So I like to show my brain what's happening there. Five times 11 is 55. So one times 11 is 11. 11 times five is 55. So five times five is 25. Now I know that my denominator is 55 and I have 25 minus 11, that's 14. And simplify if you can. And if there's not a number that 14 and 55 can both be divided by, then we keep it as it is. And that is the case. 14's only factors are one, 14, two, and seven. And the, none of those go into 55 except for the number one. One goes into everything. So that's just gonna be a factor of anything. So number two, same idea. Make it an addition problem with keep change change if you need to, then figure out what you need to do. So I'm going to keep the sign of this number. I'm going to change subtraction to addition, and then I'm gonna make this a negative. All right, so now I'm adding two negatives. Well, when I add two negatives, they just make more negatives. Think of it as like, I lost $5 and I lost $3. Altogether, I lost $8. So you wanna combine that total uh, negative amount. So what we have to do with the fractions is we have to add those amounts and just Pop a negative sign on there at the end. So negative five eighths plus negative two sevenths. So again, don't worry too much about the negative signs right there. I'm gonna cross them off for just a second. I know that I'm gonna have a negative answer. I might even like put a box over here to remind myself that I'm gonna have to have a negative answer, okay? So eight and seven, what do they both go into? Well, they both go into 56. So I'm gonna make that my denominator. Seven times eight, is 56, so two times eight is 16. Eight times seven is 56, so five times seven is 35, okay? Now remember, what we're doing right here is we're just multiplying by one, we're just changing the name. Seven times seven, or seven over seven is one, eight over eight is one, so we're just changing the name of, of the amount that we have. So 35 and 16, that's 51 at 56, and that is not gonna be able to be simplified because there's no number I can think of that both of them divide by unless, yeah, I'm right, I think. So, um, and you can always double check out the calculator if you want to, but that's how you would do it there, okay? I'm not gonna do three and four for you, but I do wanna point out we do have some whole numbers, so don't be afraid if you've got whole numbers in your problems there. Um, just, it's the same idea, keep change, change, see what's happening. If you have a positive and a negative, you're gonna have to take the bigger minus the smaller, and then you're gonna have to simplify the final answer if you can, okay? Take the sign of the stronger number. So if you have a bigger negative, adding to a smaller positive, your, negative, your answer is gonna be negative, okay? Um, and then on uh, the next part of the worksheet, five through eight, we've got decimal problems. Same idea, 
but now we're just not having to worry about crazy little denominators and getting them to match up. So I've got negative seven minus 3.2. I'm gonna keep the sign. I'm gonna change subtraction to addition and I'm gonna make that positive 3.2 into a negative. So now a negative plus a negative makes more negative, okay? So we've got, oh, I'm, already, I'm writing all over my hands already. So we've got negative seven and negative 3.2. If you ever wanna think about money, that can help too. Negative $7 and negative $3.2 is gonna be negative 10.2, okay? Um, combine them, add those up and we're gonna keep it a negative answer. The next one is negative 12.33 minus 7.21. I see it's a, a subtraction problem, so I'm gonna keep, change, change. That would be another one where we just add them up, pop a negative sign on there. I'm not gonna do that whole problem. Let's look at this one right here. 2.567 minus 6.814. Okay, it's a subtraction problem. So you might be like, oh, this is easy. I'm just gonna subtract the bigger minus the smaller, but it's not the same thing. It's like saying one minus three not three minus one. Those are two different problems, although they sound really, really similar, right? So you just have to, uh, if you wanna keep change, change you can, and that might help you. But if you take a smaller amount minus the bigger amount, um, you're gonna have to subtract big minus small, and it's gonna be a negative answer. So keep that positive, change that to addition, and make that a negative. Tug of war is happening. That's why we take the bigger 6.814, minus the smaller 2.567. Okay, whatever we get, and I'm not gonna tell you, whatever we get there, it would be a negative answer because this 6.814 is more negative than this is positive, okay? So whatever you get there, you're gonna have a negative answer. Do keep change change on this last one. Keep change change. Look, you're adding, you're adding a positive. So that's gonna be like a traditional kind of problem. The next section of our um, survival review number three is we are combining like terms. Let me get my paper set up here a little bit better. When we combine like terms, it's not too bad unless we have these subtraction symbols in here, okay? Subtraction symbols, they're gonna change our signs a little bit. So we just have to be really careful there. So that should be like a red flag to you that you have to watch out. So if I have, if I have on here negative 3x plus eight, that can stay the same, but I want you to think of this as having a negative one in front of your parentheses right here, okay? So I'm gonna take that and distribute it just like it's a waitress, negative one x, uh, and then negative one times 10 is gonna be negative 10. Now you can put it all together. See what happens was it looks like, at first it's a positive x and a positive 10, but when we're subtracting them, we want to make sure we've got a negative in front of both of those signs. So now that we've distributed that, um, or you could just think of it as simply changing those two signs, then we can combine like terms. Get your x's together. I have negative three and negative one of them. So all together, if I combine that, that's negative four x's. And then my constants, I've got positive eight and negative 10. Tug of war is happening there. Negative 10 wins by two. So it's going to be a negative two. And that's as simple as we could get that problem to be, excuse me for being off the page a little bit. All right, so next one, just again, make sure five X plus four is good to go. And I'm gonna have a negative one and I'm gonna have a positive two X. People always forget to do that right there. So don't forget, remember if, if it helps you do the waitress, distribute, she's taking water to every person at the table. Okay, and then get your X's together and your constants together. Just think of it as we're piling up a bunch of stuff and when you wanna match up the labels and put those things together. Five X and two X is how many X's. Four and negative one is how many constants and finish the problem. Do number 11 on your own. And then finally, the last section is uh, just basics here with those uh, basic integers. So just practicing again, the idea behind that. I just use 10 and three and just put a couple extra problems on there. So make sure, take your time and do those right. Cause if you can do the other problems, you can definitely do those. Don't forget to put your name on your paper. All right, have a good afternoon guys. Ask questions in class if you have them.